Live from the studio of his parents' basement, the Have You Seen It podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Have You Seen It podcast. My name is Mason Knight. Sitting across from, across from me is uh, I need to quit drinking in the morning. Uh, uh, sitting across from me. <laughs> only is, in the morning. <laughs> only in the mornings. Uh, is, is Cash Krause, the man, the myth, the legend himself here in the studio. Cash, what are we reviewing today? And speaking of unprofessionalism. <laughs> uh, Good one. There you go. Yep, Bring it right back around. Yep, uh, yeah, we are throwing it back this week. A uh, little throwback theater to 1994. That was what a, a great year. What a great year. I could say two of maybe the most valuable human beings ever were born that year. <laughs> they were born that, that year, I, absolutely. It was a great uh, year for human beings to be was. born. Uh, maybe the best year of all time. Of all time. There's no greater time. No greater year. Than 94? Absolutely. Not in my opinion, no. We are going back and doing... I didn't tell you this early on, but this is one of my favorite films of all time. Leon, really? the professional. Yeah, it's a film that I wanted to review on this podcast for a very long time. But uh, for some reason, I was waiting for the right moment. That moment never came. So uh, we were like, hey, let's just do it this week. Uh, yeah, directed by Luke Besson. Came out in 1994. Uh, stars a young Young Natalie Portman. She was 11 yes. when she started shooting this. Her first wow. role ever. Wow. Uh, knocks it out of the park. Also, of course, stars uh, Jean Reno. who yes. was fucking awesome. And yes, he's so fucking He's cool. really good in it. And an unhinged Gary Oldman. Uh, Gary absolutely. Oldman. And that's why this movie makes it for me. It's because Gary Oldman is such a fucking fantastic bad guy in this. Mm, they yes. let him go. Oh, and he went. He went. <laughs> they took the leash Especially off. Especially when he was taking the pills and he'd do like this. I love it. Like morph it's... into like this evil villain. Bring me everyone. Yeah. Ooh, I loved it. He's so good. But you could tell that they just, they just said Gary go off. Yeah. He's such a great character actor, but most of the time you can tell they got to restrain him in some way or another. Mm. There's a few films that he really gets to go loose. Uh, Dracula being one of them. And this. He just goes stupid in this. They... I was reading the trivia, and most of the scenes they use with him are scenes that he improvises. Really? Yeah. The scenes that they just let him go off. Wow. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing performance by Gary Oldman. But, yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's a uh, it's an action, I don't even know, like an action hitman thriller kind of. Uh, it's about Jean Reno, a French, you know very little about him. He's a French hitman uh, who works in New York. Don't know how it happens, but uh, and he ends up kind of adopting this protege, which is Natalie Portman's character, Matilda. After her family gets wiped out by in a, cold blood, including her four-year-old brother, by a drug-induced uh, DEA, DEA corrupt DEA official or whatever, Stansfield, uh, yeah, who played by Gary Oldman, who. Again, gets in every scene, he's just chewing up the scenery. You know, he's taking over any scene he's in, it becomes a Gary Oldman scene. You forget anyone else is in the scenes when he's in it, especially when he's wiping out that family and Beethoven's playing and he's dancing in and out of the halls. Of course. And all of his men are like so fucking scared. They don't even want to enter the door and he's just going off, uh, killing everyone. Yeah. It's got the an amazing, it's got the brutality of the 90s for sure. In, in this action, because it's mm -hmm. not afraid to kill uh, anyone. No. And it is that 90s style, too, where, like, standing over the dead body of her father and him just putting rounds in the guy. Yeah. And like, he's dead. He's just a bag of meat now. <laughs> After he, uh, yeah, he shoots that guy six fucking times, mm -hmm. that guy. But uh, after he gets shot, though. Right. And Gary Oldman, there were there were some really intense scenes that I enjoyed quite a bit as far as acting goes, where you really felt the intensity of like just how unhinged this guy was. One of those being when Natalie Portman was in the bathroom, Matilda was in the bathroom, and she was gonna you know bring in guns and try to kill, you know, uh, Gary Oldman, and uh, his henchman comes in, the hippie guy. And he points the reggae a, guy. Yeah, and he points a gun at him, and you don't know if he's going to fucking blow him away or not because he's just yeah. so pissed at this time. He's just, 
you know, pointing the gun. He's like, just bring her up. Bring her up to my room. I yeah. Like, okay, man. Fuck, dude. Chill. Well, that's why I love just don't know. about the writing of this film. It's like the entire time his men are just keep like trying to keep him under control. Under control. Yeah. Because even when he's killing everyone in the house, when you're talking about when he's shooting the dad, he's like, easy, he's dead, he's dead. He's like, be cool, be cool. He's like, I'm cool, I'm cool. Yeah. Like, they're all trying to just reel him in. And you get, you. that's another thing I love, is the is the writing is just basically focused on, uh, you know, Leon and the Matilda character. You get that Gary Oldman's character is very powerful somehow, but you don't get any background into his character at all. All you know is that he is a very corrupt DEA. But even when he goes and talks to uh, the Italian guy who pretty much controls Leon, you know, he's he's his handler or whatever. Right. You can Old tell Tony. Tony, you can tell Tony is even very scared of Stansfield, of Gary Oldman's yeah. character. Like this guy is fucking. Very fucking powerful. Well, and I mean, old Tony was essentially working for him through his hitman. Yeah. So yeah, super powerful for sure. And even when like they're investigating the uh, the fucking multi uh, multi murder of this family, like the, the the other detectives are like trying to figure out what is happening. He's he's just like, I don't have time for this bullshit. Yeah, it just walks out. <laughs> yeah, I know they get no, it's very 90s New York cops. For sure. <laughs> They're not doing a lot of detective work. Not a, yeah, not good invest investigative work, that's for sure. No, but uh yeah, he's basically just like I I, I mean I was just being a good cop, you know. Sometimes kids get in the way. <laughs> Sometimes they do and then you got to blow them away. Sometimes multiple kids get in the way. You know what? That's that's the cost of war right there. Yeah, absolutely. It's the war on drugs, it baby, is. and we're winning and we're it. Winning. And we're a few casualties <laughs> along the way, a few innocent children. There's always in any war, lost, there's going to be, but uh, There's going to be. That's why it's justified. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And uh he's also waging his war, own war on drugs by doing all the drugs. Because he is constantly <laughs> popping those pills. Oh, he, he's a pill popper, that's yeah. for sure. He enjoys them. But again, there was like a, in, in, dare I say, horror element in that. Because like he would pop that drug and like the, the way it was shot too is like sometimes it was shot over the top of him. Sometimes it was the back of him. But you'd see his neck crank and you'd hear that, that eerie like crunch. To me, it's like that's the only thing that's keeping him from... Uh, from being just pure chaos, from killing everyone. It's like that drug brings him back down. Had he not been taking those drugs, you know, he'd just go around wiping out everyone. He needs That's the... interesting. He needs the fucking pill. Because uh, what he's taking, they talk about what he's taking, but it's like an anti-anxiety pill. Ah. Like, it's like Librium or something like that. But it, it keeps him on the fucking level. But yeah, I love the sound design of him taking it. He never swallows the pill, which is fucking disgusting. But he... Crunches the capsule, mm -hmm. which <laughs> makes, it, makes it very unnerving, and it, it gives you, and you know, it just gives you more of that character that he needs the relief immediately, to where he can't just swallow it and have it dissolve. He needs that relief immediately, and he also carries around like an Altoids can or something. Like he's not getting a prescription for this shit. Obviously, absolutely not. No, <laughs> he's no one's subscribing this to him. Yeah, but uh, or prescribing, I should say. Yeah, and I love I love the brutality of the violence too. It's this is a film. It works for me because it also it's from Luc Besson, who does the Fifth Element, and he's done like Lucy and stuff. He's a very he's a French director, and you can tell that by his films. But this movie it feel it feels like a perfect combination of a French film and an American film because a lot of it was filmed. All the interior scenes were filmed in France. And then the exterior were filmed in New York because it's shot. It's supposed to be in New York, the the city, but but most of it is shot like in France, and it feels like a French film for sure. But the violence is amazing. The squibs, of course, ninety squib work was. Peak. It was definitely ninety squib work too. <laughs> it was peak squib. <clears throat> uh, brutal explosions when people are getting shot, and that's what I. Uh, I love, and I love that. I love the introduction of Leon too. Was the the fat guy that comes into town and he's got to scare him. He's got, he has to go at the very start and he's got to let him talk on the phone or whatever. And he wipes out all those fucking all guys. guys yeah. yeah. It's a great scene. See, I, I, yeah, I actually did like that opening a lot. Cause I, it set the tone for the actual character Leon as well. You, yeah. kind of get, you got a sense of who he was and what he, what he does for a living. Uh, and then the story kind of takes a turn a little bit. Cause we, 
we start to, we get introduced to this Matilda character and he's coming up the stairs, you know, and you can tell based on this first scene that they, they have this sort of like, um, not distant relationship, but they, in passing, they, they talk know to each, each other. other. They know yeah, each other. Exactly. Right. And she's smoking a cigarette yeah. and, and we find out that obviously her father abuses her. He's got a black guy and he goes, well, he goes, why are you hiding the cigarette? As it, when he comes up and he's like, well. I don't want my father to see. Yeah. Not only that, but we get maybe the most realistic slap by the dad, too. Oh, uh, yeah. I swear he, he must have probably slapped. smacked <laughs> Natalie Portman. I Poor swear that child. slap looks so fucking real. Yeah. But, yeah, exactly. And at the start, you immediately you find out that Leon is, like, robotic. There's clearly something wrong with him. He's mentally distant. Yeah. Like, there's, you know, he's a pr- professional killer, but he almost has, like, the mind of a child. But I mean, it's it's a very it's it's an odd thing to see because he's almost like immature at some points. But then we you know also, he can wipe out a fucking thirty guys right. in a blink of an eye. He also has a methodical and repetitive life too, where he does the yeah. same thing every he day. He knows one thing. Yep. And it's it appears immediately that he's been t- been taking advantage of his entire life. Oh, by old Tony. Tony. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pay you. You know he doesn't have any day. of that money. No, he doesn't. Of course <laughs> not. He's getting free executions here, which hey, five thousand a head. That guy that adds up after a while. I know, which is not that much, honestly. But no, not to kill. <laughs> no, but of course it, he's not any risk by Tony at all. He could be mm. doing it for a hundred bucks a head and still be making money. He's right. not going out there doing it himself. Yeah, literally, you only need to pay for the milk as long yeah. as he can get two gallons. In his apartment, of yeah, as long as he probably four hundred bucks back then. Oh, know? and that shitty New York apartment, yeah, for yeah. sure, rat infested. Uh, but yeah, it sets the tone very early because they're like, I don't know, polar opposite characters. Like, she's never had a good male f- figure in her life at all. Obviously, you know, her dad is a piece of shit. He uh, he's a drug dealer. He hides drugs for the DEA and shit like that. And not only that, but he's ripping off the DEA. So you know, he's got to be a real scumbag. Only ten percent though, which is a fair cost. <laughs> It's a it was hundred percent pure. It's coming back. Someone's you know cutting the fucking yeah. product. It was ninety percent pure. Taking a little off the top. Yeah, yeah. If you just mix it with anyone's some sugar gonna, and salt. If anyone's gonna know, it's gonna be the DEA. Uh, yeah, you would say right. <laughs> you can't rip off the. They've DEA. got those testing yeah. kits everywhere. Yeah, I know. So not too wise on this. Clearly, one. he's a scumbag. But like, so she needed a really good father figure or some kind of figure, uh, and he needed. Anyone to show me any kind of love because clearly Literally anyone yeah. he's never been fucking loved uh, for a long time. So it's a perfect combination. And it sets that up very early on. Yeah. She's living a horrible life. Matilda is and he's living a horrible life, too. Mm-hmm. He just goes from apartment to apartment. He has one house plant that he it's the only he thing he loves. has. He brings it everywhere. So he's <laughs> very attached to that thing. I tell you that much. And the whole thing is about like putting roots down. He can never put roots down because he's constantly has to move, you know, because mm-hmm. he's killing people all over the fucking town. Yeah. So uh, they need each other, but it gets very, uh, their relationship gets very odd because clearly she's, been abused. She's yeah. never had a good male figure in her life. And as soon as any male figure shows her any kind of love, she immediately goes to like it's sexual. Mm-hmm. And it makes a very awkward riff between the two. Yeah, yeah. you would say that. And I, I felt like Leon's character felt awkward too. I felt awkward right. during like uh when she was dressing up as the different characters. Mm. And like he was like, okay. Marilyn She's Monroe. like singing happy birthday. Yeah, the happy birthday to thing. To Mr. President. Yeah. Was supposed, back then, was supposed to be like, you know. Was Marilyn singing right, JFK. To JFK. <laughs> yeah. So They weren't just friends. Yeah, No, they weren't. No, no. <laughs> so but, I hear. Yeah. I don't know. So you had that. And then you also had the hotel uh, that they were renting at. She goes down to the uh, front desk, that old guy. It was like, he's not my dad. He's my lover. The old, the old guy. guy's like, Pukes oh, up his dentures. Can't even fathom what's going on. The only th- strange thing in the film that I didn't understand: why not just call the police in that instance? Why did he just go up there with like two maids? Because it's scummy fucking New York in the nineties, man. They don't call the cops or anything in those kind of apartments. Yeah, I'm so. guessing you got eleven year old fucking hookers probably bringing guys up all day in that nasty God, thing. That's yeah, terrible. Yeah, I know it is, but uh, yeah, dude, they don't. I can't imagine they call the cops ever in those because it would just bring you more trouble than it would help. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a brutal scene. The entire thing is kind of brutal because you know she's going to fuck it up mm. the entire time. Like he was. 
Well, and especially when she went and saw Gary Oldman. I know. In the bathroom. I was like, kid, like, she brings not nine a guns. Nine guns, but doesn't have one ready. <laughs> you don't on got nine hand. arms. Yeah. Why'd you bring so much? <laughs> well, that, that was funny too. And they bring her up to the, up to his office. Like, what were you going to do with all those guns? Just blow everyone away here? Yeah, she like, planned she to, like he, the guy goes, rounds. I think he was, she was going to kill everyone in the building. Yeah. Uh, which she probably was. She was very angry. The only, she hated her family. Hated her family. She had a crappy sister, crappy mom. She loved her little dad, brother, though. But loved, that was yeah. the only reason she was upset, yeah. was she had a four-year-old brother that was uh, gunned down, you know, right in front of her face. But uh, that was the only reason that she was upset at Gary Oldman. But she was ready to kill everyone. Yep. But I love, I love that they don't just skip over uh, the training. They, you know, they... They go through, there's a good portion of it. A lot of films would just skip over and we just get the sense that they trained. But we get a lot of scenes that I like of them actually going out and her, him teaching her the ropes of how to be a killer. Yeah, I like that I too. Like and that. I also like the fact that, especially back in the 90s, where this could have gone way overboard and sucked. Yeah, where she actually word. becomes a killer. I love right. that she never does. Right. That's why I like this movie so yeah. much. It's unconventional in a way. Exactly. And like she did get training, but of course, in that small amount of time of training, you don't train a professional trained killer. Right. Within that small, I mean, she learned the ropes of like the beginning portions of how to be a killer, but she never implemented that throughout the film. Yeah. I mean, successfully, I should say. And it was because the whole time, I mean, and it was important because, uh, John Renault's character, Leon, he did not want her to be a killer. You know, he didn't want her to leave the light that she did. But it ended up being that she kind of was a perfect candidate. You know, seeing your parents, your entire family get murdered, it makes you distant and cold. It's a perfect combination for does a killer. It, it does? <laughs> it might. Oh, that's I don't interesting. Know. Psychology is still iffy yeah, on that one. It, yeah, it kind of goes back and forth. Yeah. Waivers. So she is uh, the perfect candidate for it. And he kind of knows that. And you get that... St- you got that scene when he's like, I don't know if you got what it takes. And she sticks the gun out the window and he fires just, a few rounds. And then Leanne's like, okay, I guess I got to move. move now. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. <Yeah. laughs> you now they're going to be they investigating do. that. Yeah. Well, you're, yeah. of course. Someone just, just fired. You killed three people down there. Just a crowd of people are standing around. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I love it, man. Every scene in this film just works for me. You know, it doesn't seem like anything's wasted for sure. Will we get a sequel? Natalie Portman. So that's from the, I saw this film for the first time probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And this film has, depending what version you see, it has like four different titles. When so I, that's what that was my confusion. You messaged me and we're like, you're like, let's do Leon the Professional. And I yes. messaged you back. I said, I have never fucking heard of Leon the Professional. There's very few people that, that is the American name for it, is Leon the Professional. Uh, when I first saw it, I saw maybe an international version where it was just called Leon. And See, then there's also a version where it's just called The Professional. Yeah. Well, that's what I, at least when I watched this like years ago, that's what it was called, was The Professional. Yeah. And so like I had, you know, The Professional is such a... Uh, that's why it's pretty generic. Generic name. name. So when you said Leon The Professional, immediately I was like, okay, I have no idea what fucking film this is. But obviously, once I started watching it, I go, oh, I've seen this film a few times. Yeah, it's uh, it's great. Yeah, I, I, when, like I said, when I first saw it, the one, I don't know if it was a VHS, but it was just called Leon. Mm. And then there's other versions that are called The Professional because there's international versions. Because this film, uh, I've read the script of this film. This is one film that I've actually read the screenplay. And the original screenplay, I'll just say it's very French. There's a lot more relationship between Jean oh. Renault and oh. Matilda. Yeah. God, those French like that shit, don't they? There is uh, a lot more of that for sure. And there's their scenes are still in that international version, but they showed the original version to American audiences. And they said no. And it got horrible, yeah. horrible screening reviews. Well, I think even <clears throat> even at this point on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm going to say this is like in the 50s. No. It's higher than that. Is it? Mm-hmm. This is known as Luc Besson's masterpiece. Like Fifth Element. It's funny because he oh, did... 74. Yeah, I knew it was higher than that. But even today, I think it was just way ahead of its time. I think it get reviewed higher than that. Uh, but this was like a filler film. He was doing... Uh, the Fifth Element, which was his big fucking film, but he had to wait for Bruce Willis's uh, 
scheduled to open up. So he did this film. He wrote this film in 30 days. They shot it in 90 days. Jeez. Yeah. So, it, but this film imagine? ended up being so much more successful than The Fifth Element. Yeah. I love The Fifth Element. But now this film is, is viewed as Luc Besson's like fucking masterpiece. Is this one. And he wrote it in 30 days. 30 That's days. Fucking Because he just had to do something. Yeah. Because he was just waiting in between films and waiting for Bruce Willis, which. You know, a lot, know of, why. a lot of people wait for Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, his movies nowadays are so bad. Yeah. They're so, like, they're so bad. It's hard to watch. Oh, yeah, I know, absolutely. But, uh, but yeah, so I just, I don't know. I, I, I love this film. I love the ending. It's, uh, I love, I love the whole, the whole 30 minutes is fucking just pure action. When the SWAT are coming in mm-hmm. and they're slowly sending guys in and he's, and he's hanging from above, which is his, his thing, is to hang from the roof and then come down, so shooting it's people. pretty sick. And then he was upside down, killing them all. Because you see, like, he okay. trained for it because he's always doing the sit-ups. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and like, he, he trained specifically for He knew he have it the, one day. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, there's so much attention to detail. Like when he first goes into that room, when they first get into the new apartment, he's immediately checking all the windows, yep. all the exits, everything. Like he has a system every time. And I love those little tiny details, but... Uh, that ending when they're sending SWAT in and he's just going through waves and waves of them, it's uh, it's fucking great. Yeah. And when she does like, uh, they ask the SWAT guy, ask her what knock to do because she ends up ruining everything. Well, she gave him the wrong knock. The wrong knock. Yeah. She gave him Morse code for die, mm-hmm. and he <laughs> he hears that and starts pumping bullets through yeah. that fucking door. He knows immediately. Uh, yeah, it's great. In the international version that I watched, there's actually more scenes of her being trained. They, like, break into a guy's... Because the international version has additional scenes, and they break into a guy's apartment, and it's a... Again, they just use, like, uh, paintball bullets, because that's all he allows her to use. Well, and we saw that with the assassination attempt on yeah, that. Who's that, the president? Yeah, I don't know. He had a <laughs> he large so detail of uh, I know, security. What? Was he just an, I feel like it might've been like the mayor of New York or something. It might've been to me. It felt like he was like an actor or something. And he was like, I don't know. It, yeah, it, was weird. it also could have been a politician because he gets out and he goes, he tells his guys, make it look as natural as possible. Cause they're, he's got like uh, special security, but they're also mm-hmm. dressed up as joggers. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so it's a high up guy for sure. But yeah, there's, there's more scenes, but uh, I love that ending and I love his death too is, which again, typically for a film like this, like if it was made, you know, in the American way, he they both would have survived and everything would have yeah, been good at the end. For he sure, said he dies, you know. And I like the way that he died. You know, he killing Gary Oldman's character, and he, he doesn't uh, die in Stanfield. Natalie Portman's arms or anything like that. You know, it's not she doesn't even see it. She's the blocks away when yeah. he dies. It's well, it, like you said, I think exactly if it was American, it would have been. Uh, either if if he died at all, he would have died in her arms, you know, giving her some or something kind of cheesy or corny exactly. Like that, yeah. But uh, but yeah, like you were saying, the way he dies is fucking poor cold. Matilda gives him a, <laughs> gives him a ring. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Blows up. I love it. I love that too. He opens up his jacket, yeah, and it's fucking grenades all the way down, baby. And it's like, oh, I ain't getting out of this oh, one. Fuck yeah, levels that building. It does probably levels him. Probably it's just chunks now. Probably that kills. Innocence too, as well. So many innocents. I'm so g- guessing that building collapsed. You could have pulled one grenade. Not whenever there's a shooting in an apartment building, they never like evacuate. Them. No. <laughs> and there, well, that's a thing. They Imagine living in this fucking apartment. Yeah, All the I know. gun firing that was happening. <laughs> no one calls the cops the ever. No, no one no. ever calls the cops. Yeah. But yeah, I like. I love the way that he got out to putting on the the SWAT guy's outfit or whatever, mm-hmm. them thinking they were the one guy survived after he killed 30 of those fucking guys. Man. New York SWAT, too. In the 90s, if they can't shoot you, they will blow you up. Oh, absolutely. RPG? <laughs> yeah, an RPG seemed a little excessive in a uh, New York apartment. At that point, he did kill 18 guys, though. But you again, gotta be- no evacuations. <laughs> Not letting anyone know. That could be a problem. I know. That's well, they just, yeah. In the in the nineties though, just cover it up, gas leak or something, yeah. anything. <laughs> no one's you guessing. really can. No one's gonna ask questions. <laughs> it's a rough time for sure. But yeah, love that. Uh, love the ending of for Matilda and then blowing him up. That that's the only thing we got to talk about. Uh, we skipped over, but I immediately when I first watched this film, I immediately was thinking about a sequel. 
Yeah. You get the training. Uh, right now would be, because Luke Bassam, he wrote a sequel, but it was early on. It was like right after this, and Natalie Portman was not the age. Mm-hmm. Right now, she's almost exactly Jean Reno's age of right. what he was. Yep. But he doesn't own the rights to the story. Who does? <laughs> this The production company that made this, oh. he used to be partners with them, and now they're no longer partners. So he can't make a sequel. And they are holding this like like it's a James Bond franchise. Yeah. <laughs> they're not letting anyone. It's very odd, I know. So even if you wrote a really good sequel, you wouldn't really be able to make it unless you got the okay. Right. And he ended up, Luke Besson ended up making a film, uh, Columbia, early or later on, is that was another hit man about a girl, and I guess that was kind of the unofficial sequel to this. Yeah. But it didn't have Natalie Portman in it. You could totally do Natalie Portman, you know, get her in super fucking crazy good hitman shape. Uh, give her hit like girl shape. Hey, girl, exactly. Give her the same uh, the same outfit and everything with the trench coat and the yep. the round glasses and the beanie. It'd be fucking. Perfect, but the only the only worry, and I've thought about this, was you'd have to find a good and a bad guy to equal Gary Oldman's performance. That's the this that's what makes this film. So how could you do that? Well, I think there's ways. You'd have to figure out a, a, a fucking good way, though. It'd be difficult to do. How about uh, what's his fucking name? The guy, the the vil- Christopher Waltz. Christoph Waltz. Yeah. No, he's too, well, he's gonna play a Nazi. No, he's a he, no, he was a James Bond villain as well. He's a great villain. It would have to be a good like gritty like blue collar villain like uh, Gary Oldman was. Christoph Watts, I only see as a Nazi, a super what? scientist, or like he only plays like dentists or doctors in things. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I think he could play a good one. I don't know. I couldn't see him play playing a cop. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think he's I past disagree. I completely disagree with that, dude. I oh. think he's great. I think he can play anything. I don't know. It'd be odd to have this this German man in the <laughs> the middle of New York, well, he too, would I have guess. a fucking German accent, obviously. Has he ever not had a German accent, though? Well, he's an actor, right? I mean, Just look, at, fucking, look at Belfast. Like, uh, Judy Dench had an Irish accent. She's fucking British. She's British? She's, exactly. It'd be like me having a Southern accent. I could pull that off. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but going from German to American would be much harder, for sure. Yeah, it'd be harder. But, but going actors, from me to it, Southern, I disagree with that, dude. I completely disagree with that. Mm. Oh, yeah, I had to have it. an Irish accent. I had to go to an accent coach. You can make it happen. It's not that hard. Do I don't think accent. everyone can do a good one. Mm. I think it takes a lot of work to do a good accent. But you're also an actor. You're also getting paid to do it. Like you can do an accent. It's not that hard. Really not. It's just <laughs> okay. a little work and determination. I've heard, I've heard actors do some pretty uh, astonishing bad accents before. Uh, so I, I don't think it's as easy as everyone thinks. But, yeah, I, I guess he could do one. You would have to find a really good one, though, for sure. And uh, and you'd have to like, get Natalie Portman to do it, which I feel like she doesn't do that many films anymore. No, not really. What, is she, what has she been up to? Um, I don't know. Although she is going to be in the new Thor Yes, she oh, no. is. Is it the new Thor or the new Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, no, it's Thor. Oh. Or maybe it, maybe it is Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know. Because Thor's in both of them, but Let's I can't remember. See. Filmography. For old poor. She's going to be in Dolphin. She was in Dolphin Re- uh, Reef. The <laughs> narrator for that. Yeah. Thor oh, that's just Thunder. a documentary, isn't it? That's it. Lucy in the Sky was her last film in 2019 after Avengers Endgame. And that movie got really bad reviews. Somehow. Yeah, just Love and Thunder. Wow. What, can she not get work anymore? I don't know. I think she's a great actress, but I don't know. She's amazing, yeah. She's awesome. uh... Maybe she doesn't want to work anymore, though. She's over it. She's got enough fucking money. Yeah, no, she's good. She also went to Harvard, didn't she, for a really long time? I don't know. I'm not I'm not an expert on Natalie Portman, if I'm being honest. No, oh, I am. But, uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend Leon the Professional. Uh, you can watch it on Netflix. I think it was just added to Netflix. Yes, it was. Which, that's what I've been waiting for. So you can stream it now. I definitely say it's worth it. 
Uh, Nad Portman we barely talked about her, but she's eleven and she fucking kills it. And she acts like she's been acting for twenty years in this film. Yeah, she's very really, impressive for her first role. Yeah, yeah, cries a ton. Uh, yeah, she opens it up, does a good job. Smokes cigarettes like she's been smoking them for years. She probably has different <laughs> times. Those nineties, nineties were wild. No, there's uh, her parents were super against her smoking cigarettes in this film. They had a a contract that said she can only specifically smoke five times. She can never be showing inhaling or exhaling. And if you watch the film, they stick to that exactly. Damn. Five scenes and you never see her inhale or exhale. Yeah. All right. That's well, it. that is it for Leon the Professional. If you guys like what you've seen here, please be sure to smash that like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification as we drop videos here every single day. Thank you so much for watching and listening. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause. And until next time. Bye. Thank you.